The Book of True Life, Teachings of the Divine Master, Volume 11, Teaching 318. Blessed are you who come seeking my teaching. Blessed are you who know how to find in my word the flow of eternal life. But who are the ones who are getting stronger with my lessons so that they can remain as emissaries among humanity when my word has ceased through these channels? It is you who are purifying yourselves of old stains for failing to follow my law. Those who drain the cup of bitterness, those who are grown in tribulation, and you are cleansing your spirit in the crystalline waters of my teaching. Today, when you arrive before this manifestation, you feel unworthy of my presence, but I contemplate that you are regenerating and that purification makes you worthy of me. Feel my caress, feel my love. He is the balm that heals your sufferings. You commemorate for the last time in this form my passion of the second era. You do not come to fulfill a tradition because the disciples of the Holy Spirit will not be traditionalists. They will be obedient to my law. You come only to commemorate those divine events, the perfect examples that I bequeath to you through Yashuana, which they will teach eternally to conquer your own redemption. Today, I contemplate your spirit moved by the memory of those teachings, and I say to you, O oh, dearly beloved children, do not discard these lessons, because they are your inheritance. You thank me for the strength that my word imparts to you, but among you there are those that ask me this question, Father, why don't you perform in my life the prodigy that I have been waiting for? The Master tells you, In this time I have sown miracles in your life. From my spirit to yours, benefits and graces have always come. Through the spiritual world, I have poured out my love among you. By your faith and good works, you have seen these miracles performed. I ask, do you need a daily prodigy to believe in me? In the beginning of your evolution, I poured out graces and materialized benefits palpable before you. But when your knowledge and faith lit up like a light in your spirit, I stopped giving you these material proofs. Today, your faith as disciples must be in accordance with my will to overcome all obstacles and adversities. You ask me, Master, what is faith? And I tell you, faith is the spiritualized gaze that sees beyond the heart and the mind. Faith is the gaze that contemplates and discovers the truth. That's why the manifestations that many times you fail to understand your faith contemplates and makes you firm in them. This is the momentous dawn, O oh beloved people, for I am building the new Jerusalem among you. You are the first stones of the white city announced by me through the prophets. This spiritual city will not have its foundation in this world, because if you believe that the new Jerusalem is your earthly homeland, you are in serious error. The new Jerusalem, I am building it in your spirit, in that city, whiter than snow, will extend to all men when redemption comes to all humanity. Today, when I come to you to begin to build the great city, I contemplate among you, my people, the lack of harmony, of spirituality, and my divine spirit suffers because you still do not know how to fully be with me. Despite the perfect lessons that I have given you through the ages, you still insist on low passions, disunity, and idolatry. Truly, I tell you that if you want to be great, do not look for greatness in the vanities of the world, because they are perishable. Seek it in the spiritual, which is eternal. To reach this elevation requires a persistent effort, an unshakable will, and absolute faith. Only in this way can you achieve the glory of the Spirit. The path lends itself to merit, as it is strewn with evidence. There you can learn to renounce your pride, accepting pain with patience, rejecting vanities and passions. On the other hand, on the way, you find many in need whom you can help also reach the goal. Every man, whether or not he has spirituality in his life, wears a cross. My word teaches to bear it with love, to make it light and even necessary to be able to live. Who loves his cross loves his destiny because he knows that it was I who drew it up. He loves my will, and who does my will participates in my peace, my light, and my strength. 
He who avoids the weight of his mansion also deviates or neglects the responsibilities that his spirit has contracted with me. To take responsibility with his whim or will, he will not be able to have true peace in his heart, since your spirit will never be satisfied or calm. They are the ones who are always looking for pleasures, forgetting their pain and their restlessness, deluding himself with false joys and fleeting satisfactions. I let them walk their path, because I know that if they move away today, they will forget me and even deny me. Soon, when reality wakes them up from their dream of greatness on earth, they will understand the insignificance of riches, titles, and pleasures and honors of the world. When man has to face spiritual truth, eternity, and before divine justice from which no one can escape. Nobody ignores this, since all of you have a spirit who reveals to you through the gift of intuition, the reality of your life, the path that is laid out for you, and how much you must do on it. But you persist in freeing yourself from every spiritual commitment to feel free and owners of your life. Do most men try to comply with their religions? I tell you, you have made religions to try to escape my law and make yourselves believe that you are complying. To this humanity, I could apply the same words that I said to the Jewish people of that time when I made them to see that by complying with the ancient and useless traditions, he had forgotten the law. Wherever the symbol of Christianity arises, the cross, everywhere I find the quarry temples, my name most men speak, homages are offered to me, the rituals are offered to me every day. However, I do not discover in the heart of humanity the manifestation of love that is the essence, the beginning and the end of my doctrine. You all believe that you are in the law and in the truth. That's why when I come to reveal the opposite, you get upset. And when someone points out your mistakes, you let anger penetrate you. Truly I tell you, Christians, that if at this time I came into the world as a man, you would have precisely been the ones who would take me to the cross of a new Calvary when you heard the truth on my lips. But I will not come to you anymore in the world as a man. Today I have come in spirit. You will not look at me with the eyes of your body. Even so, you will have to listen to me. Many of you will want to find me, to exterminate me. But when you find me, it will be to worship me and communicate spiritually with me. It will be proof that faith has arisen in your heart and that of your understanding. Now I still discover among my disciples the weakness of Peter, the doubt of Thomas, the ambition of Judas, it is necessary that as a master, he continues to teach you. Remember in this last commemoration that today I do among you in this year, 1950, the day which accompanied Yashawana of his disciples, triumphantly entered the first Jerusalem to finish his divine mission on the cross. Live these moments spiritually with the true preparation, not as a simple commemoration, no, Feel that I am truly giving you my last lessons to the spokesperson in the third era, and these words will be the bread of eternal life for your spirit through its journey. These teachings will be your bulwark and your staff. You must make them yours, engrave them with the fire of my love in your conscience, so that later, just as I have given you, you engrave them in the hearts of your brothers. Much of humanity celebrates this tradition and my spirit makes all my children feel its love. It is the preparation that I have come to give to the spirits. When the spiritual and human regeneration is in all men, spirituality will bring as fruit, brotherhood, and love between peoples. Then from this planet will arise the white light of spiritual harmony, which will be seen in all the worlds. It will be the white city that my apostle John contemplated in his ecstasy. It will no longer be the murder city that lifts its master on the cross to see him bleed and die. It will be the regenerated city which awaits the arrival of its Lord, of the Father who ascends from the cross of his martyrdom to live eternally in the hearts of his children. When the master wept in the first Jerusalem, it was not because of that race, it was because of the blindness of the men who being so close to their father, they did not recognize him. When the master opened his paternal arms to clasp his children, and the hearts of the children closed 
blinded by their darkness, and the father could not feel the caress of his own. Instead, he received disbelief, mockery, scorn, and death. But since it was not the material city for which Yashawana wept, I allowed his destruction to show humanity that the one who the father sought and will always seek is the spiritual sheep lost in the darkness of the forest of sin. If in the second era I told you, my kingdom is not of this world, why do you pretend that my manifestation as the Holy Spirit be again limited in the form of Yashawana? Remember that I said to the women of Samaria, the hour is coming when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. I have come to you in spirit. I have kept my promise to you. But do not be fanatical with your nation, because it has only been your shelter at this time, as any people on earth could have been. But you, the appointed to hear my word at this time, yes, you are the chosen ones to begin to build the new Jerusalem in the unification of your spirits. Today, you are far from contemplating the kingdom of peace in your world. Get rid of all selfishness, and even when you do not enjoy peace in the present human life, do not stop fighting. I have taught you to forget yourself, to think about others. But why should you only look for your well-being and let me be the one to care for all humanity? There are many brothers of you who need your words, prayers, and love. They lack the wealth of your benefits provided by the disclosures you waste. Work these lands, fertilize them with love. If you leave the task started when called to the hereafter, do not fear that corporeal death will not end with your fulfillment. I am life, I am eternal, and in me I have made you dwell, so that the work that you have started, never abandon it. Trust in me, and truly I tell you that a single seed will not be lost and your harvest will be perfect. Think of the new generations that will succeed you, and for them sow the seed of love. Leave imprinted your trace of virtue. Do you know if in those generations I will bring you back? Be virtuous in peace and in struggle. Put into practice my law of justice and love. There is nothing impossible that prevents you from fulfilling my maxims. I come not to demand perfect works of you, because I still contemplate you struggling in the stormy ocean of life. There you fight clinging to the boat of your consciousness, so as not to perish in the raising sea of evil. The great cataclysms of the spirit and darkness that originate in the doctrines of materialism prepare the chalice of bitterness and great events for humanity. Your planet is not yet the abode of love, virtue, or peace. I send clean spirits to your world, and you become impure because of the life of men that is saturated with sin and wickedness. I contemplate the virtues as small isolated lights among the spirits, whipped by the gales of selfishness, of grudges, and hatred. That is the fruit that humanity offers me. Long before your spirit finds peace and harmony in this world, your matter has enjoyed this bliss. For man to inhabit this planet, my perfect wisdom through the elements of nature. I shook this earth, but before man inhabited it, it was the primitive beast who lived in it. When this world was turned into a mansion full of delights and wonders and beauties, I offered it to my much beloved son, to the man. This is how I made you to inhabit the earth, to inhabit it, because also to love and understand life is to love myself and understand me. When the love and understanding of everything around you are true, then you will have me recognized, and you will have been redeemed in true knowing, because I am in everything created. Those who investigate nature, devoid of love, guided only by the knowledge of human science, those who deny, it is they who have not known how to see, it is they who have not understood, and much less felt and loved. How many are there between humble among the despised, humiliated by pride and ignorance of those who believe themselves wise among humanity, who without knowing have believed, because the gaze of their faith has contemplated the truth head on, and they have understood that this planet from the beginning has been made for man a paradise of grace, harmony, and blessings. You have marveled contemplating the perfection of every being, 
Each creature formed by me occupies its place in this path, all subject to mandate, all obedient to my law. You must not doubt the origin of your nature, because you already trust in the precision and fidelity of his law. You have discovered many lessons in life, and you must trust in his compliance with his natural laws, which have not disappointed you. From the earth you have picked up its flavor. She is for you like the source of your blessings, which has always provided sustenance, the paradise of joys, and at the end of your earthly life, it has opened its womb to welcome you with love. While the human life you found in your beginning in this world, the beatitude, your spirit meeting in the third era is still struggling to achieve peace. But if in the beginning I shook this planet with the elements of nature to offer it to you as a paradise of blessings, in this time, again it will be my elements to shake you. It will be my perfect justice helping spirits to attain their freedom. Thus I will manifest myself within religions, sects, and institutions, destroying their hatred and revenge that have divided men for lack of spiritual unification. These events await humanity. Watch and pray, disciples, because these tests many of you will contemplate. You will see the doctrines of materialism stir, enveloping man, making them exclaim woes, agonizing with pain. I do not want to scare you with this warning, but to warn those who will dwell on earth in that time of trials. All this must happen for all spirits to reach their salvation. It will be my divine spirit who extinguishes the pride of men. It will be my wisdom that reveals the truth to you, who have wandered in darkness. It will be the light of the Holy Spirit that illuminates the spirit of men in their sciences and lead them to the path of forgiveness, love, and justice. When you have passed these tests of my perfect love, it will be the spiritual and material rebirth of humanity. So the men, when traveling in the path of virtue and spirituality, you will be amazed to understand that this life is the same that I offered you from the start. Nothing in it has changed. You will know that the planet that I have entrusted to you as a temporary home is still prodigal in blessings and continues to offer in them in this womb to feed them with his love, because that is the mission that I have entrusted to him. The sun will be the same, always sending its life-giving warmth as a symbol of the Lord's presence. It will be in that time, O oh beloved people, when men will understand that it has been their evil deeds that have embittered their existence. Thus they will become my good peasants, and they will prepare to harmoniously inhabit more perfect mansions in eternity. Thus I prepare you, disciples, for the times that await you, in which there will be no hungry before satisfied, ignorant before the wise, nor the great before the small. All of you will be at the Lord's banquet, and will enjoy the infinite concert of my love. At that time, O oh, disciples, the new Jerusalem will be in the hearts of men. You will reach high degrees of spirituality, and I will not send gifts of great evolution to incarnate among you to bring you my messages. I will also send you the spirits in need of your virtue, and when they are among you, cleanse themselves of their sin. In those times, the opposite of today will happen, when I send you clean spirits and you return them to me stained. But the essence of my word Form in the hearts of your children a sanctuary of spirituality, not of fanaticism or idolatry. Lead them through the path of my law. It is not enough to harm anyone. It is not fair to do evil, but if you do good, with this you will be pleasing. How clear and simple is the truth. How clear and simple is spirituality. Yet how difficult to understand them for who persist in the darkness of his fanaticism and traditions. Your mind cannot conceive that there is something more than what he knows. His heart refuses to announce what for him has been his God and his law, tradition, and ritual. Do you think that I hate those who insist on not looking at my truth? No, my children. My charity is infinite, and it is precisely these whom I seek to help them come out of their captivity, to become ecstatic in the contemplation of the light. The tests necessary for their awakening to faith are reserved for them. They will not be tests superior to your forces. They will be lessons wisely adapted to each spirit 
each life, each man. Hence, from among those dark brains, among those hearts sick with religious fanaticism and ignorance, you will see the great fervent soldiers of the truth arise, because the day they free themselves from their chains of darkness and see the light, they will not be able to contain their joy and will cry aloud, and I have returned to save the world, elevating him to the true kingdom through the ladder of spirituality. To help you in your evolution, you have had the manifestation of Elijah, your spiritual guide, the precursor of the third era, the one who has prepared your spirit. But he sadly sees that many are lost, and how great then is your pain. He seeks his sheep in union with my spiritual servants on all the roads. Who among you will prepare to attract the absent, those who are on the path of pain? To those who are suffering, I strengthen them so that they do not blaspheme, so that they feel my presence. I am ready to get up in this time, so that they are with the master at the table and are fed with the bread and wine that I have prepared with my love. You are the generation that in this third era is listening to my word, so that your life adjusts to the compliance of my law. At this time, I communicate through the understanding prepared by me to comply with my promise of the second era. In the past, my apostles felt sadness when I told them that I would soon leave them, that they would later be those that would have to spread my doctrine but I warned them that I should return when the world was in its third height of perversity. Some have not recognized me, but others will come, who upon receiving the essence of my word, understand their master and feel my presence. You will be with me again, and I will receive you with the same love as always, for that you are in my lap. I have come to give you my teaching, so that by living it, you may become worthy to enter my kingdom. Since the second era, I have taught you how you should reject temptation, everything that does not belong to you of this world, so that you may be with me, as Yahshuana was with the Father. Prepare yourselves, because you are the disciples who follow the trail of the Master, who is once again ascending to Calvary. These last lessons are similar to the last moments of Yahshuana's life, because at the end of 1950, my divine word will cease to speak to you through these channels. Today, you come in a hurry because you do not want to miss a single one of my lessons. You keep in your hearts, because you long to be witnesses of my last words to humanity. You are the same as in the second era you sang the Hosanna, when Yahshua entered Jerusalem. Today that I manifest to you in the spirit, you no longer have your cloaks in my path. It is your hearts that you offered as a boat to your Lord. Today, your Hosanna is not loud. That Hosanna springs from your spirit like a hymn of humility, of love and recognition of the Father, as a hymn of faith in this manifestation that in the third era he has come to offer you. Yesterday as now, so you followed me as I entered Jerusalem. Large crowds surrounded me, captivated by my loving words. Men and women, old men and children, shook the city with their voices of joy, and the same priests and Pharisees, fearing that the people would rebel, said to me, Master, if you teach peace, why do you allow your disciples to scandalize like this? And I answered them, Truly I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones would speak, because they were moments of joy. It was the culmination and glorification of the Messiah among the hungry and thirsty of justice, of those spirits that for a long time had waited for the arrival of the Lord and the fulfillment of the prophecies. In that jubilation and joy, my people also celebrated their liberation from Egypt. That commemoration of Passover, I wanted to make unforgettable among my people. But in truth I tell you, that I did not fulfill a single tradition by sacrificing a lamb. No, I offered myself in Yashawana, the slain lamb, as a way through which all my children are to be redeemed. In the third era, I don't come to fulfill a tradition either. With my word, I have made you to live the events of time past. Know, disciples, that the law that I have dictated to you on Mount Sinai is present in your consciousness. The sacrifice of the slain lamb, as well as the revelations that I have brought to you as the Holy Spirit, and the teachings that I will grant you in times to come. Everything is present in eternity. 
Then you will commemorate these events, but your commemoration will be one of meditation, of true regeneration and fulfillment purposes in my doctrine. You will not feast, you will not do ceremonies or rites believing I like it, forgetting about the law. You will not be traditionalist. Spiritualist doctrines will always bear in mind the passion of their Lord. They will feel his divine presence teaching their brothers, listening to the voice of their conscience. When the moment comes to commemorate the holy time in the upper room, you will do so with your prayers. You will feel my divine spirit pour out among you the bread and the spiritual wine. So I will come to clarify the lessons that you will also contemplate shrouded in mystery. Alert disciples, you have entered a time when Christian humanity wanting to achieve the true interpretation of past revelations. Study my word and prophecies. In some, I find a little light others have confused. In some, I contemplate humility, respect, and love to penetrate to the study of the prophecies. In others, arrogance and vanity, and in their longing for greatness, they explain to the people of the meaning of the scriptures, and truly I tell you that their mistakes have confused mankind. Remember that I have told you in the second era that I would send you the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit, and that he would explain the revelations that at that time you could not understand, and he would tell you about new teachings. There is the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit speaking to you of the past, of the present, and of this future. Watch and pray, people, because in prayer you will find the light to better understand my teachings. This is the bread and the wine. Feed yourselves, disciples. Strengthen yourselves, because tomorrow you have to share the sustenance with humanity. Learn from me. Take my example and my wisdom, O people, O my beloved disciples. You are all peasants in my countryside, some first and some last, but all of you can be the first because of your zeal and spirituality. At this dawn, when your spirit offers me a spiritual hosanna, my divine spirit floods you with peace, love, and blessings. By my blessings, legions of spirits who have been purified in the spiritual valley receive the light and in this time, unified with you to contemplate the continuation of my work, the building of the new Jerusalem, in the unified spirit of humanity. My peace be with you. This reading came from the Book of True Life, Teachings of the Divine Master, Volume 11, Teaching 318. You can find the links to download a copy of this book at coachingthefight.shop